Mark here from PondAlgaeSolutions.com and in this video I wanted to briefly talk about uh, pond algaecides. Are they the best frontline defense that you have against an algae problem? And you know algaecides are really commonly used. I mean by pond management companies, uh, pond owners in general, just the overall uh, mentality is, is that if you have a plant problem in a pond, like algae for example, that the best remedy is just to kill it, just to, to use a chemical and kill it off. And in some cases you have to do that. Certain aquatic weeds just don't give you the liberty of avoiding a herbicide of some sort, but algae can be a bit different in that it is deriving, in most cases, except for one species that's rooted, it is going to derive its nutritional support from the water column itself. And so, you have to look at why algae is often present in a pond uh, to begin with. Is it the problem or is it a symptom of the problem? And my view is it's a symptom of the problem. High nutrient levels are what's creating the blooms that are so excessive these days. and. So the question would be, do I treat a symptom, which is one way to do it, or do I go after the root of the problem? And this is my issue with algaecides. Your typical algaecides that are widely used, your copper sulfates, uh, chelated copper like cutrine, um, they contain copper. And that's a problem in the sense that, yes, it is toxic to algae. Yes, they do knock down and kill algae pretty readily in most cases. They clear the water, but where does that plant go? What happens when you kill it? If you think about it, it's going to die off, and it's going to sink, and it's going to stay at the bottom, and then it's going to begin to decay. And ultimately, it's going to break down and turn into muck and nutrient-rich compost. And what do you think that does for future algae growth or weed growth? It fosters more growth. It's going to stimulate more growth over time. And after each treatment, you're going to add more and more organic load to that pond bottom, more nutrient-rich muck. So it should be somewhat apparent to anyone that thinks through this that you're kind of taking the pond in a tough direction. It's not like a land-based weed where you spray it and kill it and it's gone. Uh, never mind the residue of the product, but the weed is gone. But in the pond, they don't leave. They decay. And uh, so we're building up the nutrient loading of this pond, which will stimulate more algae growth. The second thing that happens with copper-based algaecides that is kind of problematic to us is that that same copper will decimate the microbial population in the pond. The naturally occurring microbes that are the pond cleaning mechanism of this pond is being knocked out. So there is no breakdown of this accumulating mass of organic material. There's nothing taking it out, nothing helping break down any of that, nothing taking out the nutrients or helping ma mitigate the nutrients coming off of this compost layer at the bottom because we've neutralized or eliminated the very things that would do that in nature. And so what you end up with is, uh, is a pond that is relatively sterile of microbial uh, population, but the algae, uh, once the chemical wears off, just comes back. And you treat it again, you build more organic loading, treat it again, and over the years what you start to see is the frequency of the need to treat this blooming uh, algae, it intensifies, it increases in the speed at which it comes back. And so you're, you're stuck in a cycle that is going in a direction that, for me, is totally wrong. Now, I don't bash algaecides in the sense that I don't say never use them. But for us, they are a last resort option when all other considerations have failed for one reason or another. For us, a much more sensible approach is to aerate the pond well to begin with. Secondly, if we have an algae issue, we will see what the aeration does on its own, because sometimes it'll turn it around all on its own. And I think what happens is that, that increased oxygen stimulates the natural microbes found in these ponds, as long as they haven't been decimated with copper, and you start to see a better 
uh, nutrient mitigation naturally happening because of the increased oxygen. If we don't see that happen with aeration alone after say 30 to 60 days, we'll come in with some supplemental microbes and build that population back up. And the idea is to see if aeration and beneficial bacteria and microbes will help bring nutrient levels down, help start to clean the pond up, literally clean it up, and begin to regress the algae, and a lot of times it does work. And my argument is, is that should be your frontline defense. That should be your first approach before you ever put a chemical in there. Um, if that fails, there are other things you consider, can consider, you know, things like barley straw, which is a hit and miss proposition to be sure, but it can help some ponds. And then there's, there's other things you can do too. But at the end of our protocol, at the end of the line, so to speak, is where algicides are placed. And we use them when we need to use them. We use them in very challenging situations where we can't air it well or, you know, uh, something is just keeping us from having success any other way. And then we'll look at chemicals. Then we'll look at algicides. And um, that's my only gripe with the way that a lot of people are doing this. Um, there's reasons that they do it. They want to keep customers happy. Uh, they want quick results. There's pressure on pond management folks to really get results fast and, and show their work and benefit. And so I get it. I, I, I'm not knocking them. I'm just wanting people to be more aware of the fact that when you, uh, when you go a certain, down a certain path, there's trade-offs you're going to make. Are they worth making to you? And uh, maybe is there a better way? You know, that's, that's my point in this video. So anyway, as always, if you have questions about your pond, pond algae, anything like that, reach out to us at pondalgesolutions.com. Happy to help if we can, and I hope you have a great day there. Take care.